Hi, everyone. Um, I'm here to talk about the survival project. I got lots of cool questions um, on that last, I think it was a worksheet. Yeah, a worksheet um, about when we're going to work on our survival project some more. And you guys seem to really be enjoying this one. So I'm really glad that uh, we had this opportunity to really dig deep into this project because normally I only have, you know, maybe like a week max uh, to get this done. <laughs> and so, I'm, you know, we have been provided the opportunity to go a little longer this time. All right. So in your survival project, you are officially on week four. So we did week one by itself. And then weeks two and three, we sort of squished together because they were probably very similar. The newness of survival has worn off. The hard work begins. Um, and so anyway, that's why those two went together. Now we are on week four um, and we have some very exciting news. So I'm going to read the prompt to you and then I'll try to help you as I go down the list. There is a rescue group trying to find you, but they are 21 miles away. At this state, you can only hike three miles per day before you become too exhausted to move. Make a plan for the hike to the extraction point. So good news, everybody. We're going to get rescued. Woohoo! Um, which at this point you probably need because a lot of you, based on your plans, are getting a little emaciated up in that forest um, or desert or wherever. So here are some uh, things that I thought would help you uh, try to figure out what we do with this last one. So first of all, if there's 21 miles and you can only hike three miles a day, then you are guaranteed to be wherever you are-ish in that area for seven days. So you have one more week in survival mode. Um, before you can become rescued. So you still have to be able to make a plan and survive for seven more days. And at this point, you've already been in the environment for 21 days. And so you're probably either getting really good at survival or you're on the brink of not. <laughs> so, okay, here are my, my tips. Um, what's your plan for traveling on foot? Is there a way to make shoes out of anything around you? What types of plants or animals could you use to make the shoes? How will you keep them on your feet? What state are your feet in at this time anyway? So you do have to walk 21 miles, and that is a very long distance, especially at this state um, in that you're in for survival. At, at this point, you could have lost, um, some of you will probably have lost 15 pounds. So ladies, um, even, you know, really, really skinny, small, lean people in general, um, you are likely to have lost 10 to 15 pounds by now. And some of you don't have 10 pounds to lose at all. Like some of you are already so lean that 10 pounds, I would, you know, you could start to count every single rib. And you'd be in a really, really tough, tough spot. Um, also, keep in mind, that, you know, after a while, especially if you're a super lean person, um, it eats your muscles as food. Your body breaks down your own muscles to try to release uh, sugars out of the protein. And so it's it starts to really eat away at you. So anyway, um, so on the lean side, you probably lost 10 to 15 pounds by now. Um, and then all of my, you know, big, burly, muscly guys and all of my tall people and whoever else is out there listening to this, um, some of you may have lost closer to 20 or 25 pounds. And so it's not unheard of for uh, really, really muscly people um, to lose a pound a day. And that's crazy, but it's just because of the, the muscle mass you have it eats away at that so quickly that you really, muscle weighs more than fat, right? And so you really drop poundage number a lot faster than um, someone of the same weight who doesn't have that muscle mass. So anyway, um, all right. So your feet are going to be rough already. You've been in the wilderness 21 days. 
some of you have been in um, some rainforest places, and so your feet are going to be chronically wet. Things that you are at risk for are gangrene um, or foot rot, uh, and that's one of the most common problems that uh, the military has. If you have ever been deployed, I mean, not you personally, you guys are little, but like if you've ever met someone who was deployed, um, they are at high, high risk of gangrene or foot rot because your foot stays moist, especially if they were ever sent to a highly humid place. Um, either way, your foot will sweat and that sweat gets trapped in your boots in the military. And if you cannot properly air out and dry those boots, um, you're at a high risk of gangrene. You're also going to get athlete's foot pretty fast, which is a type of fungus that will grow on uh, your foot. And that itches like crazy. And uh, your foot will become red, a little swollen, and so itchy, but no amount of scratching will soothe your itch. So just so I'd let you know that. Also, there's always a risk of flesh-eating bacteria. That's pretty rare, um, but in stagnant ponds, Anywhere, it doesn't matter if it's a jungle or not, stagnant ponds have a possibility of flesh eating bacteria. So, you're going to want to find a way to get your feet dry. Um, also, there's lots of things to make shoes out of around you. Um, the hard part is keeping them on your feet and trying to do that in a way where it doesn't rub because sometimes you make, you know, these little vine type laces, but if there's nothing like in between the vine and your foot, it's going to rub a blister and a raw spot and then hello, all the infection. So be creative in the ways that you make shoes for yourself. All right. Number two, um, you have seen many symbiotic relationships in your time in the wilderness. Pick one that is specific to your area and describe it. Which two species were involved? How did you witness them interacting? So you have to um, come up with one symbiotic relationship for your region. And so basically you just research two animals that have a symbiotic relationship in uh, your area or in your biome. And then you just describe how they were interacting with one another. You don't have to tell me like, I was sitting on a rock. I mean, you're welcome to tell me you were sitting on a rock. But I, what I want is a description of how those two animals were interacting with one another. All right, number three, what's your plan for water? You cannot last seven days without it. It will be a tough journey and you will have to find some water. So along the way, you literally can't make it without finding water. Um, this is gonna be this is gonna be tough, but doable, especially if you're in a rainy climate, then look for big leaves and you can sort of like siphon off the water off the leaves. Um, so there's that bonus point, but you're still going to have to boil water. You're still going to have to do this. Um, you'll need to drink at least, gosh, at least two liters a day of water. So think about a two liter bottle of like Dr. Pepper or whatever that you might get at the store. You'll need to drink that at a minimum. It'll be closer to five liters that you might need um, to survive a hike depending on how mountainous or the temperature, things like that. So anywhere between two to five liters of water is what you'll need to drink while you're hiking and moving. This is hard because you can't just walk around with five liters of water. Um, that's really heavy, like really, really heavy, and you don't have that kind of muscle mass to give. Uh, so anyway, you'll have to be creative with that one. All right, four, what are you going to do for food? You'll burn at least 500 calories each day from hiking. You'll need to consume a minimum of 600 calories per day just to stay conscious and moving. There's a lot of calories, or that's a lot of calories in the wilderness. This may be the hardest part of the plan to make. Um, so this is a tough one. So you're going to need 600 calories, but for instance, I think a clam is like 15 calories, which is ridiculous. Um, and so you may think you're getting full off of like clams or limpets or things like that. Some of you have told me you're eating those, but they're only 15 calories a piece. And so, yeah. Also at this point, you're really pretty weak. 
and none of you have a bow and arrow or anything like that. So it's not like you can go take down a wildebeest. Um, so this will be hard. Maybe you'll have to make some fish traps. Those are easy to do. Um, you may have to make, some of you have already gotten creative and made some uh, pitfall traps. That was good. So anything like that. Fish would probably be your best bet if you have those near you. Um, also, some of you are relying on fruit, and fruit is awesome. My only aside is some of the fruits you've selected are high in acid, and that will literally blister your mouth and cause you to vomit. So you, also, if you're eating unripe fruit, you're going to vomit all the water that you have ingested back up because unripe fruit does not settle in your belly very well. Um, so just be cognizant of that. Just pick your fruit. Make sure that it is appropriate. You can have acidic fruit like citrus fruit. That's fine, except for that cannot be your only food source. And you're going to need like a starch of some variety to try to counteract the acid in your stomach. So anyway, just thought I'd give that little hint. So please stop telling me that you are 100% surviving on like oranges. You're not. All right. Um, shelters. You will have to make or find quick shelters along the way. Lean-tos are a decent option for some, while others will need to get off the ground due to ants. Um, include pictures of the shelters that are different from the ones you selected originally. So some of you is, are in uh, rainforesty type things and ants are going to bite. So in the rainforest, there are lots of dangerous ants. There are bullet ants. And yes, they are named bullet ants because they feel like you have been shot by a bullet. Um, so getting stung or bitten by um, bugs like that is, is many bugs at the same time would be like being shot multiple times. So you would probably quite literally pass out from the pain initially and then wake up still in pain. Lots of wasps, um, spiders, venomous uh, spiders and, and snakes and things like that. So a lot of you will need to get off the ground with a platform bed. It doesn't have to be anything fancy because you may only stay there for a day. So, but I promise suffering through building a platform bed is still better than being with bullet ants. It just is. Um, the rest of you, some of you are in some dry places and lean-tos might be acceptable. Um, those are pretty fast to make. My only uh, warning would be to make sure and keep fire close to you because scorpions like to become your friend and scorpions. Um, yeah, they're not someone or someone, something that you really want to be snuggling up next to you. Um, especially because some of them have paralytic, uh, stings. So just advice there. My dog's going crazy, you guys. Like, I don't even know why. Like, it's sunny. It's a nice day. She's in the backyard. No one's bothering her. Nothing. She's just laying down, barking at the air because she's crazy. Okay. Um. Oh, no. Oh, no. You'll become injured on week four, day three. Luckily, it's your arm. Well, yay for that. Um, you took a terrible fall from exhaustion and cut your arm on some rocks. It's swollen and you are at risk of infection. Make a plan for medicinal plants that you could use and how to bandage it. <sighs> Ain't it just like Ingle to make you injured on your way out the door? Um, so, so you fell down, you scraped your arm, you got a cut, and now it's swollen. And swelling is actually a sign um, of your body's immune system responding. I'm sure you just wanted to know that. Um, but you are at risk for infection because, hello, you're out in nature with nothing to help you. Except for, dun, 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 medicinal plants. So you have to go find a medicinal plant that would help you um, fight off infection and or may help you with swelling. You may also want to wrap up your arm because while you're hiking, sweat will run dirt into the wound until it gets thoroughly like scabbed, which could take quite some time. Um, so sorry, I'm, I feel like the makers on, um, oh, what's the book in the movie? Hunger Games. I feel like I'm the, I'm the game maker. All right. Next, she's going to release, what are they? Crack, wait, no. Cracker Jackers? No. What are they? I don't know. Um, 
Tracker jackers. That's what they are. Tracker jackers. Okay. Um, seven, you believe a predator may be stalking you at night. What is your plan for protecting yourself? Will you build a boma? Um, so you think that in your new location as you're hiking out, that a large predator who was previously, you know, six or nine miles away from your camp uh, now has caught on to the fact that a weak, emaciated little human is trying to hike. Um, and so you think you're being stalked. Uh, I just want to plan for how you're going to protect yourself. Sleeping with a machete is a good plan, except for the fact that when you're asleep, something can grab you and drag you off pretty quickly in, in the wilderness. So how will you protect your camp is more the question I'm asking. Um, you should Google a boma. It's, a, it's just like a little fence thing that you kind of can throw together. Um, I'm not asking for anything like, oh, I'm going to build a six foot security fence with metal panels. Like you don't have any of that. Okay. Eight on the last night before the final hike to extraction, you were overwhelmed with emotions and your own thoughts. Tell me what you are thinking, how you're feeling physically and emotionally. You've been completely alone for 30 days in the wilderness. What are you looking forward to? What will you miss from nature? How will you handle being with other people again? Um, so this one's actually really important because it's a reflective process. If you were really stuck out in nature, um, alone is interesting. It does Being alone does really interesting things to your brain, and most of them are not for the positive. So isolating yourself with um, your own thoughts, it can be... It can be really, really tough. Um, a lot of people could go into anxiety and depression type modes. Some people will go up and down with anger. Some people will go up and down with sadness, despair. Um, and then, of course, you will have a euphoric sense of happiness. So there's all kinds of emotional roller coasters that you would feel out in the jungle, especially on your last night. You're reflecting off of your journey when you first got there. So something that could be helpful is to go back and read week one and read your strategy and see how much energy you put into that and then read weeks two and three and how you lost uh, some of your luster. And then this final push, you have to put just as much energy into as you did for uh, week one. And so you've really come full circle. So I can't wait to hear your thoughts. Plus, honestly, a lot of you are pretty isolated right now. Um, a lot of you haven't seen your your friends or anyone other than your family in six weeks. And I think this could be a very therapeutic process. So I look forward to reading that. All right. And just like that, all good things must come to an end. So this is not due until May 20th because I want you to really take your time. I want this to be a really, really good last week of survival. And I want some quality, quality uh, presentations. I have returned your projects to you already this morning, so you have everything that you need. Um, email me as always if you have any questions. Good luck making the final push to extraction.